Okay, welcome to our workshop today. Um, I'm really happy that so many showed interest in this workshop. Uh, I'm Julian Kunkel from the University of Reading, and I have the pleasure to introduce you with our effort. And the workshop kind of topic is towards a globally acknowledged and free HPC certification. So that's one of the goals that we had, why we put together this workshop. So basically, in, as part of the workshop, we want to discuss opportunities, but also obstacles and a potential roadmap. We want to foster collaboration within this consortium, but also beyond it. I mean, everyone can, I hope a lot of people here can network a little bit and uh, can create new links, because we really all believe that training is really important for HPC. In terms of our agenda, so I will be giving next a short introduction to the HPC Certification Forum, which is kind of the platform that we used um, to set up this workshop. And then we have invited speakers. Uh, each gives a ten, about 10 minutes presentation. And then we talk about examination and certification, and we have discussion. Of course, after each of these talks, we should have time for uh, questions and answers. And if you have any other questions, I think it's very productive uh, if you post these questions into the chat channel. But of course, you can ask them also um, by unmuting your mic. By the way, regarding mic, please keep your mic muted, except if you are speaking. Make sure that we are not disturbed. So yes, and just a remark, critical discussions are welcome. I think we really need to put, move forward. So without further ado, let's start with um, the initial talk, um, which is about the HPC Certification Forum. And we want to motivate also why we are here. Um, firstly, we figured that users from data centers, they often don't possess the right level of training, right? So mostly they haven't learned this. They are just practitioners trying to and often trying to run a certain code to do their PhD, for example. And we know when they have uh, achieved good training, we could actually, they become more productive and it becomes more satisfactory for them. And that could actually save compute time and, costs. and of course, reduces the frustration, reduces uh, kind of the level of support needed by the data center. And the huge costs really that are applied when running these large machines. However, these users, they have a diverse user background. Typically, the scientific part is the goal, except if you have industry users, of course, then you have kind of a different goal. But still, kind of the outcome, the product is the goal, and HPC is just a vehicle. And for, for a lot of uh, customers in the public data centers, well, they just need to run an application to basically get their PhD done. They don't worry much about efficiency normally. Learning HPC to actually make use of this vehicle is not easy. We know that. So you need to understand as a user what is really beneficial in terms of training because you are not interested normally in the efficiency and making best use of these resources. You are interested in your science. But if someone tells you that you can do a task quicker by learning, a, spending maybe an hour to train a particular aspect, and you save a couple of hours later on, that would be great for you. And then you are suddenly interested in it. Also, there exists a, a huge load of training materials, and a lot of this training material, it actually overlaps. So different data centers, even if you just take the example of a workload manager like Slurm, all the data centers that use Slurm pretty much have their own training material. And in this training, sometimes there is something specific, but when you are a user and you come from one of these data centers that has Slurm and you go to another one, and then they tell you, yes, we have this nice workshop about Slurm, which maybe takes six hours. Then you may say, well, I know it, right? But in this big workshop that is six hours, maybe it's 45 or 60 minutes. Well, if you knew that, you would be so much more productive on this specific data center that you are in. Because each specific data center may have its specific requirements. So it's really important to tailor down the training material and make it specific to the local center. 
And finally, when you are a data center, well, a support member of the data center, we have difficulties to verify the skills of users. Do they possess the right skills? Is there something missing? How can we support them better? All these things, I mean, they are, I would say they are pretty much well known. This list is open ended. It's just a couple of um, important challenges that we found. So the HPC certification forum uh, has a couple of goals to kind of mitigate those issues. Firstly, we try to standardize the HPC knowledge representation in a fine grained kind of puzzle set. Okay, so you have this little puzzle piece of knowledge and this little puzzle piece. And overall, you have basically all the competences that would be relevant for practitioners, which are could be students, it could also be administrators, but it's in more sense, it's a typical user of a data center. And from this big puzzle piece, we know that then you may have role specific knowledge maps, I would say, um, like a user that may use Chromex as an application. And works in, you know, in a specific domain, he may need or she may need this and this specific puzzle pieces. So you want to kind of support them and, and tell them these are the little pieces you need to know and what they kind of um, encompass without going too far beyond, right? If I have a, I, I, if I look sometimes at certifications, like from Microsoft, you find really coarse grained certificates, like, you know, admin role X, Y, and Z. Yes, to train such a role is really a huge effort. We cannot expect from a practitioner to hundreds of HPC expert, okay? Um, we want them to know these little puzzle pieces that are relevant to them and allow them to kind of um, certify. So certification, I already mentioned, um, is important. We believe this is really important because um, it kind of testifies the knowledge of users. Uh, you know, I have this knowledge, okay? And it also helps the users to be sure that they have the knowledge they should have. On the other hand, data centers would understand the kind of the knowledge they um, support or they train. So certificates form kind of the boundary for the users. Yeah, I, I think this is really an important piece. Okay, finally, we want to support an ecosystem around these HPC competences. A couple of tools, we will talk about them. So. Talking about the scope of this uh, HPC certification forum, we believe it, it should be the central authority for this kind of re competence representation in this puzzle map for the certification and the support. There is a limitation to the forum which we make on purpose. We do not compete with content providers, which are you know training anyone that provides training material or that trains people. Yes, they should do that. We we you know we don't. And also, we don't prescribe a curriculum. We don't say you should learn this piece of puzzle first or this piece of the puzzle. No, this is really, it is a puzzle piece, a set of competencies that can be cherry picked for a specific role. So in terms of the organization, so it's an independent international body. We organize ourselves into a steering board that is elected. We have full members that have voting rights. And what is a full member? Well, a full member basically is someone that contributes a little bit to the project. Well, initially we say it's something like an hour a month, but um, as this kind of uh, activity that we have gains um, traction and sometimes people are very busy, this really varies. But sure, certainly someone that wants to vote for the steering board, they should contribute to some extent. Then we have also associate members. Well, anyone in any institute is happy to associate with us. Um, really happy that people endorse the activity. A minute, Greg, I will answer that. And we collaborate also with um, other um, institutions and uh, other activities such as the SIG HBC edu chapter and chats with House Alliance and uh, even in the EU with certain uh, stakeholders that find this important. We have to see how this uh, moves along. So the responsibilities of the certification forum is really this curating and maintaining this a skill tree that I will show you and the certificates and these tools and ecosystem around these competences. 
So when I mentioned here, so this is now the question that Greg asked. So system administrators, right? So when we talk about the competences, well, for HPC, we really we are really inclusive. We believe that administrators, they also have an important role in this kind of puzzle piece. Um, speaking to people like from Open HPC, they also found this really interesting and said at some point um, contribute um, relevant skill sets for them. But we haven't been yet so far because administrators are a smaller set of, um, I would say, users, right? And they are typically well trained and they can invest more time in it. But we believe it's really important, so admins are included. Um, yeah, I hope it answers it, Greg. Yep. Good. In terms of membership, so the mandate in election, so the steering board is typically elected for one year. This is the period of um, activity. We are now uh, approaching the end of the second year. The, the period is typically June to June, which means at the CHPC conference, normally we would have a kind of a general assembly or birds of a feather session where we in which we um, kind of take over from one steering board to the next and announce um, our activities and kind of bring closure to the past year. This year we have to, based on the coronavirus, make this slightly different. And we also pushed um, the election one month uh, back. So that means, yay, it's really a good chance for everyone that is now here to get active. And uh, hopefully some of you are happy to contribute to this activity. So we will soon be starting with the voting for the next year period and we can still accept nominations. Not all the roles have been given because some of the people that we had in the past, we had someone from DDN, for example, uh, that need to drop out for business reasons. And uh, so there will be some change in the steering board and we hope that you join our Slack channel. And if you are interested, join our elections channel and then um, that you may kind of participate. So in terms of governance, um, we have some coarse grained rules splitting the responsibilities across the roles. So I'm the general chair. This time we have a various curator rules. By the term curator, we really mean someone that takes care of this kind of skill set, right? In our skill tree in general, and then we have topic curators. And you see here, for example, administration is one of our topics. We have six. Uh, core topics, which are the highest level topics in this tree that you will see. And uh, we have also one curator for the examination. We have pub publicity chair. Yeah, and there will be some change over to next year based on the responsibilities of the people. And you see, we had some people from companies. We had someone from DDN, from Data Swing, which is a training company, and from NVIDIA. Um, you have to revisit basically oh, the roads. So how are we organized? Well, we have a web page as a central hub, this hpcertification.org web page. We have a couple of mailing lists, um, one for members. So everyone is welcome, one for news. News is basically very low traffic, I would say two mails a year. And we have for the board, which is the steering board. We have monthly, we organize public meetings on our Slack channel, um, which is which turned out to be really productive in general. Basically, uh, everyone can write, everyone is welcome to contribute. So we have normally our annual general assembly. Well, yeah, we, we will do this a little bit different this time. Um, I suppose we'll use a little bit more Slack to communicate as part of a regular meeting. So basically everything is developed in the open that we uh, do. So we have a GitHub and there's one exception, which are the examination questions, which you learn later, have, um, it makes sense that we have to, that we cannot reveal them. Otherwise, you can automatically answer all the questions, I suppose. Okay, I spoke so much about skills. And uh, as I do, uh, a core responsibility of the forum is the classification of competences. And we say these are skills because it makes it faster than competence. Skill is faster. What is a skill? A skill defines the background, objectives, and learning outcomes. And now we organize it in a skill tree. Here you see the high level representation of the skill tree, but each of the dots that you can see in this mind map can be opened and it goes further into deep. 
I haven't counted the last time uh, the skills, but I think it's more than 60 or so on the leaves that we have. So we have this kind of skill tree, we, which the high level um, kind of representation. And this really is the means by which a practitioner can um, in, dig into the tree because normally they would stand, okay, I want to use the HPC environment. So maybe they go into this tree. I want to do software develop, maybe they go into this tree, right? And then they would read a little bit about the background of this high level node and they would understand oh, I'm right here or I'm not right. And then the deeper they go, the more specific it becomes, but the more explanation is given such that anyone hopefully can understand, any practitioner can hopefully understand the, the importance of such a skill for themselves. There's also one for performance engineering, as you see, we started analytics. And there's a core one about HPC knowledge. And there is a cross-reference between all those kind of subtrees. There is a cross-reference possible. It's just that one skill is basically owned in one of those um, subtrees. But references are possible. Here's a high level skill, um, really shortened. So we talk about Slurm workload manager, for instance, and there's a little bit background, right? Slurm is a widely used open source workload manager providing various advanced features, right? Very coarse grained, I really shortened this one. And there is a general learning objectives and aims of the skill. So when you, when you have obtained the skill, you should be able to comprehend and describe the basic architectures of Slurm and its tools, and then you should be able to use relevant tools to run and monitor parallel applications. So these are basically the abilities that a learner may gain when having the skill or is expected to have. And then we have a couple of learning outcomes uh, listed below or again shortened. But, uh, the goal of learning op outcome, this is basically um, if you go to higher uh, education, um, basically the learning outcomes they must match to be the training and they must match the examination that's basically the idea and that means when you have a learning outcome it must be so specific that you can later examine the outcome that and make sure that the, the trained person actually has the skill so we see here for example that you should be able to run interactive jobs using s alloc and the batch job with s batch okay so this is really very high level. And I think those that know Slurm, right, they would say this is to have this kind of skill is really important. And these learning outcomes um, are grouped together into a meaningful skill. In this case, we talk about the basic skill level. So you could imagine a user that should use Slurm because he needs to use Slurm on this specific data center. They all should have this kind of skill. That is a basic level. And then we may have an intermediate level where you can say, well, some people may use this intermediate level, but it's more for specific cases. Maybe it, get, it squeezes out a little bit more efficiency, or maybe it's um, a bit more, I would say, specific to use cases, okay, limited in scope. And then you could have, for example, an expert level. So we can also distinguish by the levels. And of course, when we talk about the workload manager in general, there would be a skill yeah, in the tree that would be the parent of it. For example, in this case, it's also in the knowledge tree, HPC knowledge, you see something about job scheduling. And then underneath would be an overview because you say, regardless of the tool that you would see, like Slurm, um, there should be one skill that explains to someone what is a workload manager and a batch system in general. How does this work? And this is another skill that would kind of, part of this puzzle piece um, is an elementary one, um, but it would be um, not tied to a specific technology like Slurm. Okay, talking a bit about how did we end up with this representation? And actually it's not only that we started two years ago, we started two years ago with this um, HPC certification forum, but we had started with an, a project which was called PECO in Germany a couple of years um, before, where we uh, talked about this kind of classification and we undergo so many discussions, how this should be organized, that I want to share a little bit of this insight that we had so far. So what is this kind of the granularity of skill descriptions that are meaningful for practitioners? So if it is 
too fine grained. Yeah, then for example, you would say, I make one skill for S batch. Okay, that, that is really too fine grained at the leaf level then. And you would wonder what can you achieve with such a skill? Yeah. And if it's too coarse grained, it's difficult um, to structure the material. If you had, like in this case, one skill that says how to use an HPC environment, yeah, it would be really difficult. Would be really difficult for someone because when you go from one data center to another one, well, is it still the same skill? Well, no. There are some puzzle pieces that are different on this data center. So the question about cloud, um, yeah, like I said, in general, what we what we look here for is the parallel computing and data centers in the wider sense, but there are aspects of cloud that could be going in. I mean, we are really happy if someone wants to take care to put it in as well. And it is a kind of a blurry, there's a, it's difficult to blur the line or draw the line between cloud and HPC sometimes, like virtualization and so on. These are skills that play nowadays in both um, kinds of uh, domains, HPC and cloud. So we believe, yes, this can be extended further. It, the key problem is not that we can do it. The key problem is really is the manpower to do it and to do it right and meaningful. So that's the tricky part. Okay, so what we said as a guiding principle at the end is that when we talk about a leaf node, well, such a leaf node, such a puzzle piece should be something that is coverable by a lecture or a workshop in a one to four hour session. Okay, like I said before, this high level skill slurm, well, yeah, if you look at it, yes, this could be taught maybe in, in 90 minutes, right? Depending on the crowd you have, maybe even a little bit less with examples, right? So this seems to be a appropriate level um, of a skill on the leaf node of this tree. And in terms of organizing these skills together, well, we, we decided to organize it in this tree structure because this tree structure is pretty much bound, um, like we said, to those tasks, high level tasks users want to do. I program, I want to be admin, you know, yeah, I may have some core knowledge and then we add these references. Like I said, there can be multiple instances for the same skill, but for different skill levels like basic and expert knowledge. And in terms of how do we verify, we have been asked this before, how do we verify that we have the appropriate skill tree? Yeah, and a, a, a sound a certification approach. Basically, we need the feedback by HPC community and practitioners to justify the approaches. That's why it, it cannot be done. I mean, I strongly believe that such an approach cannot be done by one data center. One data center can really build a great, um, own line and their own line of, um, let's say, um, curriculum. And it works well like a university, but the key problem is um, that we, we must make, build something that is international and that can, because people and data centers, they are highly international nowadays. Research is international, so we must be as well. And we need the feedback to make this kind of work. Okay, some fi final further considerations. Well, in terms of creating certificates, um, we bundle useful skill together in a certificate and the user, a user's qualification is certified by a successful exam. And Christian will later explain more about it. Uh, why did we bundle it together? I'm asked like this, yeah. The question is, well, if I ask you to create an exam for this little slurm cloud manager, that you have maybe learned in 60 to 90 minutes of a workshop. Yes, I can create something. But the key problem is even if you've done this workshop now and you, you do the exam, I don't know, two hours later, a day later, you may still remember everything, but a week later you may have forgotten everything. Because it's just so a small working set of knowledge that it's so easy for you even to back, you know, to this, I don't know, 40, 50 slides and just walk through them while you do this exam. So we must have a kind of a more, a bigger chunk of work that is meaningful to make um, a reasonable test. That's at least what we thought. Everything is possible for this. Um, yeah, so also we separated the skill 
the, this declaration of this knowledge, like I said, this puzzle map, yeah, with learning objectives. This is separate from certificates. And finally, what we found really important is it's different from content providers. Yes, we really don't want to prescribe this is the training material or anything. We, we want that there is a big ecosystem of training material that is already, but we want to help make it searchable, navigatable, so to speak, to increase the efficiency. So this is very similar in Germany when you look at the high school. Because basically you have these learning objectives, like people should learn math, they should learn addition between numbers one to 10 or something like that. And then you have different institutions and, and publishers that create training and learning materials. And finally, the teacher would attest to with these exams, you know, you have learned addition or something like that. So we really want to put badges on material. And finally, um, we want to make it possible that you can create your own views. So you can create a role like tester, builder, developer for a specific software or for a specific domain like chemistry, physics, um, climate science, whatever. So it can be really specific, right? And I would love to read something like, um, you know, we have this specific software in our domain and to do it, use it right, you have to have this skill according to the HPC certification program. This, this, and this skill, and then you can run it. This and this and this skill, then you can effectively be a developer for it. I think that's a nice way. Like people nowadays say often when you want to be, to develop it, oh yeah. Was this your first 20 minutes? Sort of, yeah. And we are almost there. So um, I think um, basically when you read something like Git, okay, we need Git to, to do that. Git is really already such a big topic that you could split it into various skills. And it's really hard with such a coarse grain skill to navigate it. Same here. So we need to make it work. Okay, so where are we now? And then we are pretty much done. Um, so we released the version of the skill tree. It's not done. It's version 0 0.5. We released this little batch as a draft, which kind of could be put uh, on training material to say we train this material. We have a JavaScript for visualization of the skill tree. It's on the web page. I don't show you. We have the XML and Markdown versions. Um, basically, nowadays, we work primarily with the Markdown versions that is embedded on a wiki because it's easy to use for people that have no idea. So we have a prototype for exam process, for the exam process and the framework. Uh, we have something talked about tree versioning. We, we have this kind of, like I said, um, seal of endorsement. Everyone can use this. We engage with various stakeholders. And we, start, we did some surveys to verify the skill tree, but there are more to be done, of course. And this is basically the wiki. Yes, if your web page, you will find it. And it's not done for everything. Like I said, more needs to be done, which is why we need work. So the question is, how can we contribute to the skill tree? Well, as a member and everyone, yes, we have this web page with the markdown versions. It's controlled in Git, so you can basically submit a Git pull request with the changes you want to do. Um, you can review, you can comment. We have a mind map that has the structure of the skills and it's then synchronized with the skill tree in the Git. So it's really a way of rapidly generating this kind of markdown versions quickly if you want to make big changes and show them. And of course, everything is discussed on our Slack. So to wrap up, now we approach the end of the 20 minutes, is um, our expected benefits of this whole approach is that we believe for practitioners, it will increase the motivation to participate as they get the certificates that are recognized in the CV, can validate their knowledge via tests, they can browse and navigate these competencies, and that they have an easier going to identify recommended and required skills related to tasks, and that they can compare teaching across sites much better and understand differences between such teaching material as well. And for data centers, we believe that it accelerates the sharing of teaching materials, it simplifies the documentation of the skills, it helps you to identify missing teaching activities because you have this puzzle piece, this big set of puzzle pieces, and you can see which one you don't train. And you can uh, tailor the skill representation specifically to users using the tools. And maybe 
ultimately in the long run, what we see is that you can correlate the lack of skills with inefficient or efficient usage, right? And then to wrap up, we are the effort to standardize representation and certification of relevant HPC skills. And we do not provide content or linear curriculum in any sense. You can cherry pick these building blocks. As a perspective for data centers, we believe that in the long run, you may even use statistics and machine learning to direct users to the right skill. Like I, I imagine someone calls you, uh, uh, you get called by the support staff and the support staff tell you, you know, we saw you made this mistake in the job submission a couple of times. And you say, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry for that. And then the guy says, well, you know, luckily we have this training thing. And you say, yeah, sorry, I don't need training. Just explain it to me. And you say, well, but we figure oh, if you do that, um, in the long run, you will be 50% more efficient or something, right? Maybe that's a way of approaching some of the people as it is fine-grained and so on, and uh, to really uh, you know, get people on board that need training, but they don't recognize the need. Okay, maybe even some skills will become a mandatory requirement when you run large runs. Like if you run more than 1,000 cores, well, you have to show that you have done those skills. Yes, and the customizable representations and navigation for data centers, we have a, actually a tool for that, a prototype for it, um, so that you can browse the skills and related content. Um, yes, feel free to join our Slack mailing list. Now we have basically 10 more minutes for the discussion, and then we move to the next.